Helldivers 2 is taking the world by storm, and so are the bug and robot invaders hellbent on destroying Super Earth. Today we discuss the backstory and abilities of the Terminids and Automaton enemy factions. The following information can be found on the Helldivers wiki. I made a previous video discussing the story what you need to know for Helldivers 2, and while there is some backstory on Super Earth and the enemies within the game, most of it's centered on the gameplay. But today we talk about the Terminids and the Automatons. Let's start with the bugs. In the vastness of the Galactic War, the Terminids emerge as a relentless force, driven by an insatiable desire to multiply, spread, and obliterate the principles of democracy. This enemy race, a nightmare of evolution and adaptation, presents a myriad of threats through its diverse and deadly creatures. Terminids are a bug species, hell-bent on destroying everything the humans have built. We fight them, one, for liberty and freedom, and two, to mine their precious resources. There are many different creatures within the Terminid Empire of Destruction. At the bottom of the hierarchy, the brainless scavengers screech to summon their kin at the slightest hint of freedom's defenders, serving as the harbingers of chaos. Swift and fragile, they are easily dispatched but not to be underestimated. If there are many of them, they will swarm the Helldivers. The Brainless Scavenger is the lowest of the Terminates. Upon encountering an Agent of Liberty, it emits a piercing scream that attracts nearby bugs in a reflexive attempt to destroy freedom. The Warriors, embodiments of aggression, showcase the terrifying efficiency of nature's design for conquest. Their vulnerability lies beneath their armored exteriors, a fact exploited by those daring enough to face them head on. Warriors step up in size and have soft spots underneath them or in the head, so if you're trying to take these ones out, use some of those heavy-hitting weapons with armor-piercing rounds. Warriors are the natural end result of a species optimized for mindless expansion. In controlled environments, they've eviscerated innocent baby cows in under a second. One can only imagine what they do to the humans. They're ruthless. Hunters, with their astonishing agility, dance through the battlefield, evading attacks through instinctual leaps. Their presence demands precision and firepower to overcome their nimble assaults. When launching around, they're easier to take down, but that's the issue. They'll fly over you, swarm you in an instant if you aren't careful. Scientists note that while this behavior might appear intelligent, it is merely a base instinct, akin to a housefly avoiding an incoming SWAT. The Stalkers is where things get interesting. A product of sinister experimentation, the Stalkers blend into their surroundings, striking unseen. Revealing them requires cunning and tactical use of resources to pierce their veil of invisibility. Stalkers use their tongue to reach targets from a distance, and their invisibility can be revealed in certain tactics like using smoke grenades. When these creatures are on the map, they often have a lair you should find and destroy as soon as you can, or else they'll keep spawning, ready to wipe out your team in invisible assassin fashion. A side effect of terminated gene splicing research, stalkers can camouflage themselves almost to the point of invisibility, but nothing can hide from the cleansing light of freedom forever. Next up, we have the Bile Spewers and Titans, grotesque manifestations of environmental recklessness. These bugs wield corrosive bile as their weapon. Engaging these behemoths demands strategic positioning and heavy firepower, targeting their vulnerabilities with precision. Bile Spewers first appeared following an unavoidable spill of toxic chemicals on terminated E710 farms. The bile spewer's thorax is bloated with several metric tons of corrosive acid, which it vomits in revulsion upon encountering democracy. The bile spewers can be taken down by targeting explosives at their back, while the Titan is one of the largest bugs currently known. You definitely want to keep your distance from the bile Titan. Use as many explosives and stratagems as you can, because this thing can get pretty terrifying. Oh my god. Lord, that thing's fucking huge! What the fuck? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Chargers, unstoppable in their charge, embody brute force shielded by thick armor. 
Only through coordinated tactics and exploitation of their few weaknesses can they be brought down. Shooting their armored legs helps slow their advance, and the railgun can take them down easily. Chargers are exactly what they sound like. They'll run at a hell diver they have in their sight. You can dive out of the way, but sometimes that's not even enough. Using teamwork is a great option to take down the charger, have somebody bait and kite it around while the others shoot off its armor and legs. And lastly, for the Terminids, we have the Brood Commander, which orchestrates the assault with strategic acumen, directing its minions with a mix of pheromones and commands. Its downfall is crucial to dismantling the Terminid threat. The Brood Commander is a rare and deadly strain, and they'll bring whole swarms along with them on the battlefield. Bring many stratagems with you to take down these commanders. The automatons represent a cold, unyielding force of mechanical terror, born from the depths of an unknown origin. These mindless robots are hardwired for destruction and possess a singular hatred for freedom, making them formidable adversaries to all defenders of super-Earth. The automatons are mysterious in the current scheme of things. Cyborg-like logos from the first game, the Cyborg Faction, have been seen around automaton equipment, which has sprung many theories. Are the automatons the remnants of the cyborgs? Or do they worship the cyborgs of the past and are completely new? No one knows, but one thing's for sure. We must defend Super Earth from the robot invasion. Troopers serve as the foot soldiers of this robotic army, simplistic yet deadly armed to the teeth with machine guns or rocket launchers. Their design philosophy emphasizes firepower over finesse, making them the cannon fodder of the automaton forces. You can compare troopers to, say, the grunts from Halo or the dregs from Destiny. The lowest-ranking enemy of the automaton ranks thrown out to cause as much havoc as they can. They might not be the most powerful, but in groups they may become an issue. The Commissar mirrors a crude attempt at leadership, staying back from the front lines to command its lesser kin with rudimentary tactics, yet its cowardice belies a vulnerability to precise attacks. The Commissars perform a combo of melee and ranged attacks, but as mentioned, they'll stick back and let the troopers do the work first. The best way to defeat the Commissars is by headshot, keep them at a distance. Scout Striders, towering embodiments of firepower, require a calculated approach to exploit their armor weaknesses, emphasizing the need for cover and armor-piercing capabilities in engagements. The Scout Strider ATAT looking machine is piloted by a trooper. These things are pretty easy to take down if you are behind them, as you can easily take out the trooper itself. If not, make sure you take cover and aim for the legs to immobilize the threat. The pilot should be your main target, though. The Berserker, a nightmare of close combat, utilizes chainsaw arms to tear through the opposition, requiring distance and heavy firepower to neutralize. Unlike the Commissar, the Berserker will straight up be in your face with those chainsaw arms. The weak spots for the Berserker can be found on the head and stomach area. Shotguns and grenades are great to take them out, and definitely keep your distance. Devastators and Hulks represent the pinnacle of automaton warfare bristling with an array of destructive weaponry and armor. Engaging these behemoths demands the utmost in firepower and tactics, focusing on their few vulnerabilities to bring them down. Despite this walking mech and its armor of madness, the heads of these creatures are easily exposed, so headshots are great. They do have an array of weaponry though, arm cannons, shields, machine guns, and rocket launchers. Next to that, you'll have the Hulk, nothing but pure, heavy firepower. These things are covered in armor head to toe, but do have a weak spot on their back. If you keep attacking this, they'll overheat and eventually explode. Orbital and Eagle strikes with explosives can do significant damage to the Hulk itself. Lastly, you have the Automaton Tank, a blatant mimicry of Super Earth's designs and dropships, the carriers of this relentless invasion both require precise strikes to weaken their points and to ensure victory. Suggestions for fighting a tank? Stay behind cover. The automaton tank has vents near the rear side of it that you can shoot. Airstrikes, barrages, orbital attacks will swiftly deal with a tank. It's also a great option to damage that turret. 
The automatons also have their own dropship. These are called in to drop off those infantry on the front lines. The dropships don't have a weak point, but you can aim at the thrusters with certain weapons to destroy them. Recoilless rifle or the disposable anti-tank will down the ship easily. When the dropship is flying in, you can also destroy the automatons it's about to deploy before it does. Grenade launchers, rockets, anything will do the trick. So there you have some background story and information, what we have from the Terminids and Automatons. Again, this game's more focused on the epic gameplay moments, but there is some story and explanation behind its characters, creatures, and their own goals. If you'd like to see some more gaming, lore, and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.